My name is Shake Mozart and I'm here to explode Important media topics with kids ministry pros Whether you got a mega budget or just minimal dough Welcome to the Kids Church Visual Show Hello and welcome to the Kids Church Visual Show with Shake Mozart I'm Shake Mozart This is a show that wants to help you visually communicate the gospel to your kids On this episode, we're going to talk about how to use visuals on the mission field But first, let's hear what you had to say How do you teach kids about missions? Um, We try and find different ways that we can instill in them being a missionary themselves. You know, like we've done, um, we collected blankets last fall for foster kids and the kids just brought in new blankets or, um, what else have we, you know, just doing yard work for somebody, um, things like that. I mean, just things that bring the community outreach to the community, but bring it to them. We probably don't do an effective job throughout the year. It's become more event-based. What we do, at least for our ministry, is we do a lot of focus on Heart for Zion, which is our overall church vision. You know, even though we give to missions, we do a lot for city and inner city in our backyard. And so a lot of a lot of what we build towards goes towards event projects that are happening around our city. Um, so our church does a kingdom builders model um, where it's almost like a mutual fund that everybody gives into and then we designate that to our missionaries. So my kids all know that um, you ask any of my kids, what is kingdom builders? Kingdom builders are missionaries who go around the world meet people's needs and tell them about Jesus. Um, So we'll use different curriculums like BGMC or Africa's Children put out a really cool virtual missions trip. So I try to once a month really just focus in on a different missionary or project and just get the kids to understand the why behind what they're giving. Uh, One of my favorite things is we partnered with a church in Hernando, Mississippi, and the kids pastor there actually uses our show as uh, a mission opportunity for his students. So his kids, their job is, he tells them that the epic show is not for them. It's for their their unchurched friends, classmates, teammates. and so they go out and their job is to uh, invite those kids to come see the show where we can share the gospel with them. So um, that's how we, that was one of the, the best ways that I've seen um, what we do be uh, teaching kids about missions and putting them in, in the practice of that. We do Operation Christmas Child throughout the year a couple different times. Uh, we definitely pack shoe boxes during the shoebox season so we can teach children that they are little missionaries. They may not get to go to the country that their shoebox is going to, but the shoebox is going to be taking the gospel message to a child in another country and then that they could possibly become a pin pal or a friend with that child. Uh, so they are doing the Lord's work and they are taking um, the gospel to the ends of the earth through that shoebox gift. Oh, I love this. I love this. I'm so glad you asked this. That's like my grand question. Um, We start local. Um, So I tell them to look for things that they, that is a need. Look for something that you wish you could do for somebody and then tell a grown up about it. I said, because that's how it starts. Somebody saw something and they shared it with somebody else. And then now there's a group of people that want to go take care of it. And you could be a part of that. That's a small piece. I said, if you see trash, pick it up. That's a mission. That could be a mission. I had a lady picking up pennies like forever. I think she said like 60 something years, like over a thousand dollars in pennies. So I tell kids like start small. I said, just because it's small or is it little, it doesn't mean that it's insignificant. Getting their hands in it. Um, I think we have tried for years to just have them give financially. And that, that's great, but um, we have our own nonprofit at our church, and so we've realized by doing food drives and kids ministry, or we're doing hands-on organization packing, packing meals for. We have an elementary school down the road that has 32 different languages and very, very refugee-driven, 
and them seeing a face in a school with with a can or with food lets them know this food is actually staying it's local and we can do local emissions and they can actually help pack those boxes those boxes have a name they can write a letter to that kid um, especially during like fall break and spring break we know those kids aren't going to get food during that time and so getting them hands-on um, and realizing they need to serve at a young age and, and, and even like their parents seeing them serve and pack boxes together is really good Hello, this is the Kids Church Visual Show with Shake Mozart. I'm Shake Mozart, and with me today is a very special guest, uh, Nick Craik, who is a missionary all the way in Palau. Nick, how's it going? It's going pretty good. Hello, everyone. And hey, Shake. Okay, good, good, good. Hey. <laughs> now, we... Uh, this is our second time recording because we had some connection issues last time. So we're going to see if, if two is the magic number. Um, <laughs> and let's, let's get started. Tell us, tell us about yourself and your ministry. All right. Uh, well, my family and I are missionaries here in Palau. We've been here almost 12 years. And uh, prior to this, we were children's pastors for six years. And so uh, we've run the gamut of ministry here in Palau, everything from starting children's ministry in the Assemblies of God here to uh, school ministry, doing school assemblies, teaching character traits, and now we pastor a local church. And so we kind of oversee all the ministry. And so we all, I also serve as a chaplain for the U.S. military that serves here. So we do a little bit of everything, and we've done a little bit of it all over the years. Yeah. Yeah, and, and tell me, uh, when you were in the States, you and your wife were in kids' ministry. Tell me a little bit about that journey for you guys. Yeah, I mean, when we graduated college, our, our heart was really twofold. It was missions and it was kids. And so we actually thought we would be doing children's ministry forever. Uh, so we started six years uh, in the States, four years in Ocala, Florida, and two in Charleston, South Carolina. And those were some of the our, our greatest memories and greatest years of ministry, just as far as investing in kids and learning how to do ministry and children's ministry. And so some of the fruit from those days are still living on as some of our first kids in that first ministry are now serving as missionaries overseas. And so we can't take wow. full credit for that, but, you know, we'll take partial credit. And so we just thank God for those opportunities to invest <laughs> in kids. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so with your perspective of doing ministry in the states and then doing uh, ministry in the in the mission field, let's let's just ask this this broad question: Why is it important to connect with kids through visuals, especially or particularly on the mission field? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the to me, the rules are the same. Basically, reaching a kid, you bet, you have to get on their level. So whether they grow up in the United States or grow up on a small island, uh, you have to capture their attention, and then you have to be able to teach in a way that they can understand. And so, a thirty-minute sermon isn't going to work for a child. And so, we have to be creative, and we have to uh, be wise in our approach to teaching God's word. And so whether it's through a puppet or a magic trick or a video or an object lesson, something that we use in teaching the lesson has to be involved just because it helps bring the kids in. And so uh, obviously on the mission field, it's probably even more important, especially with the language barrier. They do speak English here, but yeah. the English level is, is different. And so for that reason, we have to be uh, even more intentional in our visuals and how we approach ministry. What are some of your favorite visual techniques? Uh, I love to do gospel illusions. Uh, I've done them in the schools here. In fact, before they learned my name as Pastor Nick, they simply called me the magic man here in Palo. And so we've used gospel illusions in basically all of our ministry here. Uh, <laughs> and so that would be number one. I still love doing puppets and using characters. I love I still love to dress up as crazy characters and be able to do a skit either with my wife or somebody. Uh, to me, it just it pulls kids in. It brings the comedy level up and uh, all of those things. So those would be my top three, gospel illusions, um, puppets, and still uh, characters. Are, are you guys able to use... Um, any videos or countdowns and, and things like that? We do at times. Uh, 
are we're kind of limited in the fact that mm-hmm. like our kids church and our church we just use our personal computers so my wife does use some visuals when she does kids church our ministry mm-hmm. to the schools uh, we found it very difficult even though we invested in a super short throw um, projector and all of the things to try and get it project our our ministry is outside and so it's very hard to get the the digital aspect uh, we yeah. do love them. I've used them a lot in years past. So whenever we do get the opportunity, uh, you know, I know like my wife for sure, she uses the um, <laughs> the skits from Saddleback, you know, the little, uh, the digital Bible stories. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. And so those are just fun short stories that teach the Bible lesson really, really easily. So she uses a lot of that. Um, and any any kind of visual we can do that we love to, it's just we're kind of limited as to our opportunities to do so. And how how do the kids respond? Uh, they do they do love it when they yeah. get to use it. I know my wife tells me all the time they love the the saddleback stories. That's why she keeps using them. Uh, they're simple to understand. Yeah. And I know when we've done other visuals in the school assemblies that they've worked, it definitely draws the kids in, whether it's a skit or. That's a YouTube video that we found that applies to the lesson. It's it's definitely a huge asset. We wish we could do it more. It just doesn't always work that way. What what are some of the challenges of of using visuals overall on on the mission field? Um, some of it is just context. Uh, you know, we have to. Mm. You know, any good missionary has to learn the culture and the language of the people. And so some of the same ways that we would have taught a lesson in the United States, we may not necessarily teach it here in Palau. You know, I'll give you a very brief um, example. Like, for instance, where scripture tells us that our sins are um, like scarlet, but the Lord will make them white as snow. Obviously, most of the kids here have never even seen snow. So if we're going to apply that lesson, then we right. would usually say something like, because they chew something here called beetle nut, and when they spit, it turns like a really bright red, and it stains everything. And so we say, even though our sins are like beetle nut, because it's kind of a gross thing too, um, God will cleanse it like the white of a coconut. And so, uh, you know, that gives them a visual that they can understand, and we can actually have, we wouldn't have the beetle nut in church, but we could have a coconut. But that's just a, a even a mind visual of scripture that would apply more to them than... Mm-hmm. Uh, scarlet and snow. Uh, so those kinds of things, just making it contextual uh, to our, our audience. But I think that applies yeah. in the United States or uh, overseas. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, for you guys, where do you get, where do you get the visuals that, that you use? What, what are some resources that you find yourself going to over and over again? Yeah, for digital resources, we go the free route and we find stuff on YouTube. <laughs> uh, we have used uh, mm-hmm. other curriculums and stuff that, that provide it. And so if we're using a specific curriculum, we, we will use some of those visuals. Uh, but some of them are very American, and so they're hard to use here. Uh, as far as, like I said, the, the ministry that we like to do with Gospel Illusions, puppets and stuff, I would say there's three major suppliers that I've used over the years. Uh, one is Daytona Magic. Uh, close to home in Florida. Uh, the other one is Mad Hatter Magic Shop, close to my other ministry home in South Carolina. And then Xtel Expressions does uh, great illusions, puppets, um, things for ventriloquism, etc. So uh, those would be my top three. Uh, Xtel definitely has some great uh, visuals that don't look old and cheesy, you know. So I, I love some of the products they put out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so, so one of the things that we're asking this this season of, of the show, we're, we're asking every guest to kind of think about um, on a sort of in a bird's eye view, what is the future of visuals in kids ministry? Yeah, I think um, obviously, I think it's definitely going to continue to move in the digital realm. I think that's going to be something that because kids are so glued to their screens, uh, we have to be intentional in creating uh, biblical um, creations for them to, to look at. So I don't know if that's applying it to while you're preaching, they can actually see the visual in their own device or whether it's just helping 
uh, our game as far as creating amazing visuals on screen or digital videos. You know, uh, you know, like how Chosen has kind of changed the game of of, of television for for uh, the Christian realm. You yeah, know, right. but if that that can be done for kids, I think something like that. But who knows? Maybe because I am a little old school, maybe some of the stuff I do will become retro cool in kids ministry again. <laughs> you know, maybe people will start pulling out puppets and <laughs> yeah, gospel music. Yeah, yeah. So that may be the future of yeah, you know. Because oh, yeah. sometimes yeah, it's... I, I I still feel like it works. You know, uh, you know why reinvent the wheel if yeah, uh, if you sure. don't have to? So. If it still works, um, don't throw it out. And so I think some of those things could make a comeback just because they still do play a vital role. And it does help keep the kids' eyes off the screen. Right. So I'm, I'm in that, uh, you gotta weigh both. I believe in digital, um, ministry, but at the same time, I think we also have to do our parts as pastors mm-hmm. and children's pastors to get their eyes off the screen. So it, it's a, it's a catch 22, but you know, each sure. pastor has to balance how they do that. Right, right. And what's, um, when you think about the way that media is created in the States, uh, uh, and then kind of used overseas, what, what are some ways that it could be done better? What, what are some ways that the, the, the visuals that are created here in the States could serve you in your context better? I think uh, a lot of it is just, um, you know, maybe language and, and what they use for examples. You know, a lot of the stuff is what I would say very American as far as um, not necessarily how they talk, but just, uh, you know, if you talk about a roller coaster in your skit, then the kids here are like, okay, maybe I've seen one on TV, but it doesn't really apply. Uh, you know, things like that, mm-hmm. where um, if we just keep it, I'm centered on the Bible and then find a simple way to explain it that maybe um, can be contextualized globally. Uh, you know, because let's be honest, our world is getting smaller and uh, digital media is accessible by all. Right. Lots of people speak English. So I think it would be great if American um, creators of, of Christian media and um, digital digital ministry would be able to maybe contextualize what they do to where it's available and accessible to multiple cultures. I know that's difficult because every culture is different sure. and maybe that takes more of a missions mind than just a children's ministry mind. But I think it's, it would definitely be applicable and be usable around the world. So it, it's not necessarily an easy task, but I think it's a possible task. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. What, what are some, what are some final thoughts that you have for either, uh, kids ministry leaders who are in the States or for kids ministry leaders that are overseas, what are some final thoughts that you have regarding using kids church visual or using visuals in kids church? Um, I'll I'll give my typical children's ministry spiel. Uh, I like to, I like to look at children's ministry as a toolbox. And so, you know, I, I do a little bit of construction here and there. I know a little bit about a lot and I know um, <laughs> not much about everything. But, uh, you know, in your toolbox, if all you had was a hammer and a screwdriver, you'd be pretty limited as far as what kind of repairs and what kind of work you'd be able to do on a house or a building. Uh, but the more tools you have in your toolbox and the ability for you to use those tools, uh, the more you can expand your ministry. So in a very specific, what I mean by that is, in your toolbox, if you can do some gospel illusions, if you can have some sort of character, if you can do puppets, if you can do digital media, if you can do drama, if you can do music, and it doesn't mean it all falls on one person, but within your ministry, you have those types of people available to you and it expands your ministry. So your toolbox may not be just your skills, mm-hmm. but maybe you finding people within your ministry to say, okay, we want to put a, a skit together that's going to be funny or you know, we want to uh, put a mini musical together for this lesson or, you know, whatever your whatever your creative mind comes up with. But expanding your scope of uh, what you use for reaching kids and then it helps keep their attention because sure. kids can get uh, we can get so uh, we can maintain the same status quo and then kids kind of get tired of it. Uh, and so I think it's our job as business pastors right. to make sure we look in our toolbox and say, OK, what haven't I used in a while or. What skills do I not have that I can I can work on? You know, when I went to my first church, 
I didn't, I've never used a, a, a gospel illusion, but the previous children's pastor left some behind and I got hooked and it's become a part of our ministry for years. And so sometimes it's just yeah. trying something new and you, you may fall in love with it. You may not fall in love with it, but you may find somebody in your ministry that can use it really, really well. And so that, that I mean, I think that applies to children's pastors in the U S and to those working uh, globally as well. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, Nick, thank you so much for, for joining us today. If, if people want to see your ministry, if people want to support you, where, where can they go? Uh, the easiest way to get all of our information is on our website. It's uh, www.iheartpalau.com. That's heart spelled out. So www.iheartpalau.com. And Palau is spelled P-A-L-A-U. Thank you, Nick. Thank you so much. No, thanks, Jake. Thank you for joining us on the Kids Church Visual Show with Shake Mozart. I'm Shake Mozart, and I want you to know that your Kids Church Visuals matter. This has been a podcast presentation of Church Visuals, executive produced by Carl Barnhill, hosted by Shake Mozart, edited by Brett McLemore, titled in show graphics by Jason Merrick. For more training to help you communicate the gospel to your children's ministry, visit churchvisuals.com. <laughs>